welcome to the all new Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio or Stelvio Q as Alfa have kindly abbreviated it. Um, we are in the Middle East, we are in the state of Ras Al Khaimah which is just outside of Dubai and I conveniently find myself on one of, if not my all time favourite driving roads. It's called Jebel Jays and it winds its way up to the tallest point in the Emirates. Um, actually, I probably don't need these because it's not that sunny, uh, which, is, which is a real shame. I think one of the main reasons for coming here is to see if we can shine some sunshine on this fantastic paintwork. Anyway, we don't need paint to talk about the car. What have we got? I think what says a lot about this car is that it's 2.9 litre V6 twin turbo engine pushing out uh, just over 500 horsepower was developed in conjunction with Ferrari. So Alfa are not messing around. It's such a lovely characterful engine. This day and age, obviously for emissions regs and efficiency, everything's going turbocharged. And one of the problems with that is you can lose a lot of engine character, particularly in cars which have to do two jobs like this one. On the one hand, yes, it is a quadrifolio, so it's designed to be sporty. On the other hand, it is an SUV, sports utility vehicle. The S, it does incredibly well. I shall demonstrate that shortly. The UV, the utility vehicle, well, this is where the, the engine plays into it as much as it does the fact that it's five doors, big boot, etc. I think over the years, SUV has become quite a loose term in that it's just a less practical four by four. This, however, when you get up it, it is really, it surprised me, rightly or wrongly, I thought that I might be coming out to drive just another SUV. However, the turn in on this is phenomenal. You can actually, if you time it right and you've got plenty of throttle after the apex, it actually oversteers. How cool is that? And it does it all in the relatively practical package that is the standard Stelvio. Anyway, into race mode. Hear that shift? It absolutely slams it home. Wow, and it's got some serious torque. Now, while I'm hooting it up this phenomenal road, let's give you guys a bit of the data to give this thing some context. So, 0 to 60, 3.8 seconds. Don't forget, this is an SUV and we're in the threes. This car as well is going up against the likes of a Porsche McCann. Now, what makes this a little bit different is that it actually weighs 100 kilograms less than a Porsche McCann, which means power to weight is greatly in favor of this car. But also, it seems that the center of gravity is very well placed. It's light. It just handles so well. It's just these brakes out. These are the standard steel rotors. Lovely. Watch this if I... Uh, Look at that, just past the apex, a little bit of gas, and it favors, are we ready? A tiny bit of oversteer, <laughs> rather than understeer. How happy does that make you? Very. This is quite clearly a car for mums that take the school run very seriously. Very confidence inspiring. This car has to be two cars in one, and it's mostly to do with the whole efficiency thing these days. What you wouldn't know, because Alfa have integrated it incredibly well, is that when you're cruising and taking it steady, the engine actually shuts off one bank, so it becomes a three-cylinder engine, not a six, and then it reignites them all once you feel like gaining some ground much quicker than you probably should be doing. The transition between those events happening from going from three back to six cylinder, utterly seamless. What else is cool? Of course, being an SUV, you know, sports for me suggests not only does it perform well and go fast, but it has to offer an emotional connection with the driver. Now, this having a helping hand from Alfa's friends over at Ferrari, it's actually got a flat plane crank. So it sounds so lovely. Listen, and listen to the shift now, you ready? It's got a nice whip crack on the upshift. I'm 
pretty sure SUV shouldn't be this good. <laughs> it's amazing. to mention this is Alpha's first 4x4 quadrifolio and they've absolutely nailed it and the sun's coming out it's a good day in Jebel J's minimal body roll considering under heavy braking you can trail brake this car in so what I mean by that is you can brake into a corner while you're gradually turning into the corner often in cars when you do that if they're not performance orientated you often get the back of the car getting quite light because all of the weight transfers gone to the front of the car and so you get this sort of squirming effect this isn't doing that now partly because while this is 100 kilograms lighter than the competition, it's still just over an 1800 kilogram car. So it has got plenty of weight to keep itself planted. But still, you know, we're still shedding off a vast amount of speed and sending it all the way to the front where the engine is. And it's putting it down wonderfully. I want one. I would like one of these, please, Alfa Romeo. Oh, if not for that gear shift alone. This truly is an SUV now. Just by putting this gearbox in, I mean the engine's fantastic, but you can't you can't just have a great engine. The number one thing is it's inspiring me to keep going. I just want to keep driving. Well done, Alpha. So, first drive done. Phenomenal. Also, the sun has just come out, so I thought we'd take a walk around this while the sun is showing up to the paintwork. Got some awesome details on this car. I'm gonna start with the brakes because they slow down this plus 1800 kilogram of a car, something special. Um, I mean, I've been going up and down. Check this out, this road, it winds on and on and on and on and on. Um, yeah, I've been going up and down that all day. Very little fade. Don't get me wrong, it's not a track car, but it's been holding its own fantastically well. Um, it sounds, check out the pipes. It sounds brilliant. Uh, as I mentioned, a flat plane crank, 2.9 litre V6 twin turbo. But the way this thing puts out the vocal cords is impressive. I guess, again, that's because it's been developed with the guys from Ferrari and just had a little Italian flair sprinkled on it. My favourite features of the whole car is the interior. Now, I have spent some time in the standard Stelvio. Nice place to be, but this, they've really upped their game. Let's check this out. Smatterings of Alcantara everywhere. This seat is developed in conjunction with um, Sparco. So they've got these really thick side bolsters, which it's a really comfy seat, but when you're really taking the kids to school fast, these things are holding you in place big time. But it's the use of carbon fiber. The whole side of the seat here, carbon. Nice carbon trim on the wheel. Alcantara clad on top with matching red contrast stitching. Alfa Romeo embossing on the, on the headrest. But this, I think, is my favorite feature. The carbon-backed sculpture of both of the front seats. Look at that. What a great place to be, huh? You wouldn't mind having a back seat if you could stare at that much carbon all day. And again, carbon door inlays. The whole thing, I'm just, I really like, I could genuinely see myself owning one of these cars. I think it's awesome. And they sound great too. Now, little details like vents on the bonnet might not seem a big deal, but when I pan back like this, look how much more aggressive it looks for it. Really subtle, but great flair. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the way this car looks. It's got excellent stance. The side pro profile is great. Yeah, really impressed all around. So there you have it. My first drive in the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Big, big fan. I'm hoping to get my hands on one of these in the UK. And if I still like it then, I would genuinely consider buying one. I think people will be taking a lot of lessons from this car moving forward. Uh, SUV market uh, is exploding. It's one of the fastest developing markets in the automotive sector right now. And every man and his dog is launching 
SUVs. So um, yeah, this is great. I'm really thankful that Alfa are back and that they've put this spanner in the works for everyone else because it's only going to make everyone else step up their game. They've made it sound good, look good, handle great, brakes are fantastic, and it's still practical. I mean, I, what more do you want? Well done, Alpha. Uh, comments below. Love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, would you go for one of these over a Julia Quadrifoglio? Depends on what you're after. No doubt about it. The Julia, uh, better for drifting. But yeah, in terms of just an, an all-rounder that ticks lots of boxes, you'd be hard pushed to find anything with this much fun and practicality in one. Uh, and that's coming from someone who's an RS6 owner. So doing well. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Ciao.